What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, May 11th. Uh, I'm coming in refreshed after taking the night off last night, so it's always good to wake up and know that you didn't lose any money. Um, huge slate tonight, 14 games, tons of high-end pitching. Uh, Jake, how'd your night end up last night? Night was okay last night. Um, pitching was pretty good. McCullis and Molly were both decent options. No mustache for McCullis for me. Uh, didn't quite get the complete game shutout, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, Royals' stack could have been a lot better. They got shut down after the first inning, after Tillman got out of there. They knocked him out too early. Uh, ended up losing, so after going up like 6-0. Um, he only threw like one in the third or something, right? I think I saw that correct. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe it was a little bit more. Yeah, that. yeah. He they knocked him out pretty quick, and then they got shut down the rest of the game. So, you know, it could have been a better night, but still pretty good all around. Now I just want to confirm whatever I just said, just to make sure I'm not wrong. <laughs> One of the third. God, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Not bad for not having looked at any of that stuff. Uh, we've got a ton to talk about, so let's just dive in. First game up. Orioles and Rays. Orioles 4.7 run implied total. Rays 4.3. 54% chance to win for the O's. Uh, Kevin Gaussman going for Baltimore. Jake Faria going for the Rays. Um, I'm not really on either of these two guys. And if I were on DK, I probably wouldn't have either. Uh, this would be just a hitter's game for me. Yeah, I mean, I have a little bit of interest in both of them. I think Gaussman more than, than Faria or Faria. Um, Gaussman just he's capable of these big performances he had a complete game two hitter last time out against the A's and that's not all that shocking if you've like watched him over the last year or so um, I, mean, I like him against the Rays the Rays aren't that easy of a matchup maybe as you'd think just with like their strikeout numbers against righties and stuff um, it's a good hitters park if is Caleb Joseph supposed to catch here I don't know. Oh wait, is he hurt? I can't remember. Um, no, he's not hurt, but he sh should be catching here. But I have Chance Cisco too. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit of a downgrade. You'd like to see Joseph catch Gaussman, um, just because he calls a better game. But I don't really like any of the hitting here, either side. I guess oh, okay. I can make a case for Machado or Scope, but I don't really want to play any of these Rays. Uh, I like them both, actually. Uh, my first okay. crunch, I got a decent amount of exposure, and I think it's mostly due to price. Um, you know, I've talked about it in the past couple shows, but Orioles hitters on FanDuel are super cheap right now. Uh, Scope is now over 3,000, and Trumbo is at 3,000. Uh, but everybody was under that mark for the past couple days, so they still have really cheap prices. So Mancini... Adam Jones, I mean, Machado, I, don't, I guess I don't really need to talk about, but Chris Davis is only 2,700 on FanDuel, 3,300 on DK. Uh, I'll probably end up with a decent amount of Orioles stack. Um, I don't know, I just, it's a price point that makes basically everything work today. With the amount of high-end pitching, um, it'll allow me to have most of the high-end pitching in sort of any order I want to be able to fit in Orioles or to fit in Rays, guys like Denard Spahn or Brad Miller. Uh, those would be the two guys that are jumping off for me to start. Brad Miller is only 2,400 on FanDuel. Um, you know, none of the Rays have any real pop, but from a price standpoint, I'd expect one of these two teams to do relatively well, and I'll have enough exposure to both that like I'll be happy when it happens. I would have guessed that I have more exposure to the Orioles and the Rays than the public will. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be all that popular of a game. I think the Orioles will be a little bit popular on DK just because of their pricing. Yeah. Uh, everyone outside of Machado is under 3,900, it looks like. So they'll probably be a popular stack uh, relatively for a 14-game slate. Uh, I just really like Machado, Jones, and Scope. I don't think I mentioned Jones, but he's hitting the ball very hard did again last night. I think he had a double and a homer. So there were some people asking about him in chat, and we were me and Chris were talking about him over a bunch of different guys. So I hope people took that advice on the live stream yesterday because Jones was awesome last night. Nice. 
Uh, yeah, like I said, I'll have a bunch of them, and I won't have their hit. I won't have either pitcher at all. Like, absolutely, I'll have zero. That's all I got. Me too. Yankees and A's. Uh, Yankees, five run implied total. A's, 3.5. It's a 65% chance to win for the Yankees. Sonny Gray going for New York. Kendall Graveman going for Oakland. Uh I like Sonny Gray quite a bit as a, as a pay down option. He's probably not someone I'll end up with more than a line or two on in FanDuel just because there's too many pitchers and it's you know he's basically half price of Scherzer. I'll just have enough. I'll just have way more of the top end. On DK, I think Gray makes for a really nice second starter. Um, Three point five run implied total for the A's is tiny. And uh, I'm not in, I'm not really worried about that A's lineup at all. So this would be a spot where I would grab some Sonny Gray. You're not a huge Sonny Gray fan, right? No. I mean, I've had my moments with him, but uh, I don't think I'm going to him here. Like, it's a very good price for him on DK. He's shown some signs of life over the last couple starts, going six innings each time. Um, man, I just... I think he might be broken, and cool. Gary Sanchez catching him doesn't. Oh, is it going to be Romine? It's a little uh, bit of an upgrade, but uh, uh, yeah, I Romine see him both on the lineup right now. Yeah. Okay, that's a little bit of an upgrade for him, but still not enough for me for Sonny Gray. I'm just really nervous about. He's not missing enough bats right now. Outside of that first start where he had an 18% swinging strike rate, um, all under 10 since then, and. Man, I, I am scared of this uh, athletics lineup in Yankee Stadium. Short porch out to right. Matt Olson could get to him pretty easily. Jed Lowry, your boy Matt Joyce. <laughs> All these guys are going to be tough outs for him. And then, like, Matt Chapman has huge power and Chris Davis, of course. So I'm actually interested more in some Oakland bats, specifically the lefties, Lowry and Olson. Uh, yeah, we're running, we're running different today. I don't have any – I didn't get really any uh... – any of the hitting in this game, either side, um, gray is just sort of like the only thing that I really looked at. Let me see what I got in the, the DK crunch when I did it. I'm sure you got some Joyce in there. He's 3K. Uh, let's find out. So I got 16% sunny gray when I okay. ran the, the DraftKings lineups. I won't, like, on FanDuel, he's just, it's a different sort of scenario. I don't think I got any Oakland. Let me see if I got any Joyce. I don't think I did. Uh, no Joyce right now, but I did just run it with two quick stacks, so like no, no potential for one-offs or anything. I don't mind having him as a one-off. Twenty-five hundred on Fanduel, three thousand on DK. Like that's, you can very happily do that, especially in Yankee Stadium. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, it, it's a good park for left-handed hitting, especially. Yeah. And these guys have power. So I don't think Sonny Gray is back to his elite status, even though he's had a couple of good starts in a row. Um, so I'd rather target some Oakland bats, especially if Gray is going to be a little bit chalky, which I'm assuming he will have a bunch of ownership on DK just because of the lack of options below 7K. Yeah, so, I would imagine he'll get a, a decent amount of ownership because of his price point and the way that pitching is set up. He'll he'll go with Scherzer and Verlander and Sale, uh, right. I would imagine, pretty regularly. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think I'm zigging while others are zagging on that. Uh, I mean, that, that makes sense to me. He could be – it'll be interesting. You want to keep an eye on ownership projections uh, mm -hmm. for Gray. If it's low, then I, you know, I do like him. If it's high – then I think that pivoting off of him to someone else in that range as a second starter is probably the better play. Yeah, and you can check out the ownership projections if you are a premium member. So I'm a company man. Um, <laughs> nice little plug there for Osmo's ownership projections. Um, check those out as the day goes on. They get updated pretty regularly. So I always check them out before I'm making my lineups. Yeah, and ownership projections are more important in baseball than they are in any other sport. So, for um, sure. If you've ever been like curious about something like that, 
you want to be paying attention to it. Now, if you're only playing one line, it's a bit less important. You're, you're trying to maximize yourself in that regard. But if you're playing, if you're max entering things, uh, you want to know your relative exposure compared to what you expect the field will be. Yep, absolutely. Um, did I hit that? I did. Do you, do you like Yankees bats here? Not really. Uh, I didn't have really? anything pop up. So anything that I would get from the Yankees side would be uh, in the one-off territory. I'll always look at someone like Stanton just because he's got different kinds of power. Uh, Judge has 50, a $5,200 price point on FanDuel. To me, he's just way too expensive to touch. Um, I would look at Gardner a little bit. Uh, 3200 on FanDuel, 3600 on DK. It's just a you know a, a decent price for a Yankees team that has a five-run implied total and the leadoff hitter. Uh, but anything that I get here, I'll, I'm not really stacking up this game at all. Okay, yeah, I like the Yankees bats a lot, actually. I, I don't really have much respect for Graveman. Gets hit pretty hard by righties. I believe he's in or near the top 30 in average exit velocity against them this year. Um, he's not going to miss bats just in general. And these Yankees are going to put the ball in play. So I like all, like, one through seven, really. Um, <clears throat> you can full stack against Graveman. He's not a guy I'm worried about really at all. So I like Sanchez, Judge, Stanton, if you can fit him in. Even Andujar at third base for 3,400, I think, makes for a pretty nice play. Yeah, there you go. We are we are looking at this game in a complete opposite way. We are. Which is good. We're not just uh, giving you bullshit, people. I'm giving you my truth. Jake's giving you his truth. Today they don't match. We should do some sort of uh, side bet Yankees game or something today. Mustache bets again. Yeah, we should. <laughs> I can't have a mustache. I'll look terrible. I already look dumb. I can't. I can't look dumber. All right, Pirates and Giants. Pirates four run implied total. Giants three point seven. Fifty four percent chance to win for the Pirates. Uh, Jamison Tyon going for Pittsburgh. Andrew Suarez going for San Francisco. Uh, I like Tyon here. Uh, he looks like he's got a really nice price on FanDuel. Not a guy that I'm going to end up with a ton of, and I don't expect him to have very much ownership on FanDuel either, but uh, I think he's got a nice matchup. And if I was on DK, he would probably be my... Ooh, probably my primary second starter. Uh, it'd be between him and Weaver. Um... I would want Ty on more than I would want Sonny Gray. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I think I'd be higher on Ty on than Sonny Gray. The, the Giants are just a pretty good matchup for righties. I'm worried about Ty on not missing bats. Like, he should be. He's good. Or at least we think he's good. He was last year and at the start of this year. Um, so it's just kind of a whatever matchup for Ty on for me. It's a good price for him on DK. I could see using him as a second starter, but I think if I'm going this low, I'm going really low for my second starter. Um, sure. So that's sort of where I'm at. I tie on a fine play. I don't really want to target bats in this game no. either side. Um, I don't have any. I don't have any bats in this game. Yeah, I man, this game really doesn't exist to me outside of maybe tie on. I'm surprised you don't like tie on more. I got him in 22% of my lines on DraftKings. Like, I mean, I, yeah, so, like, I, I just can't see going all in. I don't think he's got a ton of upside, just in general, if he's not getting the strikeouts that we were accustomed to seeing at the beginning of the year with him. Okay. So, I mean, I think he's a, I don't know. Giants he's, have the fourth highest K rate against righties this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a good matchup for sure. Yeah, so uh, I'll have... A few lines with him on FanDuel. Again, most of my ownership is going to be lumped into the Scherzer, Verlander, Sale, Bauer group. Um, so, like, paying down on FanDuel isn't going to be a, a giant necessity. Especially on days where, you know, there are 28 stacks to choose from. There's bound to be one cheap enough that I like that fits with expensive pitching. So... I would have more 
tie on on FanDuel if the slate were shorter. I like his matchup, but he's just not a guy that I need to be exposed to very heavily to get over the field. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's sort of where I'm at. I can't see myself going 100% on him, which I have to if I'm making one lineup, if okay. I play him. Exactly. Yeah, and hitting, uh, not not the game for me. Sean, I want to mention Sean Rodriguez. I didn't okay. see he was leading off, but he's 2,800, can hit lefties pretty well. If he's leading off, then that's a fine punt play. I agree. Same uh, on FanDuel. He's only twenty one hundred um, second base eligibility, so that's a that's a nice punt second baseman yeah. if you need it. Mm-hmm. Phillies and Mets. Uh, Phillies four point four run implied total. Mets three point nine. It's a fifty seven percent chance to win for the Phillies. Jake mm-hmm. Arrieta going for Philadelphia. Stephen Matz going for uh, New York. Not really looking at either of these guys. They're both fine. If it, if you wanted to talk yourself into Arietta, I think that's that's okay. But uh, this is a game that doesn't really exist to me. I, I don't have much interest in the pitching side of it. Um, you can talk me into Althair and Reese Hoskins from the Philly side. Uh, I'd probably have like a couple lines of Phillies just because of righty power in Philadelphia and the way they sort of line up. But it's a minimal amount, and I don't want the pitching. I like the Phillies. Like you said, I think I'm a little bit higher on them than you are against Steven Matz. Uh, Matz is guy who's given up 43% hard contact to righties. Swinging strike rate under 8, but like his K rate is like almost 30% against righties, which is not going to hold up. Um, Phillies don't really strike out all that much against lefties. They hit them hard, and it's a good park for righty power, like you said. So I like Hernandez and Althair. Uh, love Reese Hoskins, of course. Carlos Santana, Franco. I love them all the way down to Alfaro. I think he's a decent catcher option, even if he bats eighth. So I really, really like the Phillies. They're one of my favorite stacks tonight. Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, they're priced a little bit better as a team on DraftKings than they are on mm-hmm. FanDuel. Uh, like, Hernandez is the same price on both sites, so that's kind of rough uh, from a FanDuel perspective. Odebel Herrera is the same price on both sites. Uh, makes it really tough to get to him. Uh, Santana is only $3,000 cheaper, so he's got he looks a little bit better on DK. Same for Mikel Franco, only three thousand or $300 cheaper. So, Althair and Hoskins would be my focus. Um, I think a DraftKings stack is is completely in play. I'll have them probably, I don't know, four or five lines with Phillies in it. Nothing crazy. Yeah, I, Phillies probably going to end up... I'll have at least Althair and or Hoskins on my lineup, which is my main lineup, which is usually my only lineup. Um, and then I'll probably consider Santana, too, for 4K. I think he's a little bit underpriced. I'm not a Steven Matz believer. I don't understand what people see in him. Um, just not very that into him as a pitcher. I think he's he's going to get rocked at some point. Um, he's due for some big regression, and I think it could be here against this powerful Phillies right-handed team. No, yeah, I can see that for sure. Uh, Hoskins is a real difficult out in yeah. a righty-lefty matchup, so... Yeah. Absolutely fine with having Hoskins in any way you would like to put him in a lineup. Blue Jays and Red Sox. Uh, Blue Jays, 3.6 run implied total. Red Sox, 4.9. It's a 64% chance to win for the Red Sox. Aaron Sanchez going for Toronto. Chris Sale going for Boston. Uh, I like Sale quite a bit. Um... Honestly, I can flip a coin between Scherzer, Verlander, and Sale right now on FanDuel. Uh, I, I see very little that separates them for me. Uh, I prefer Sale on DraftKings just because of his price. I have a feeling that other people will feel the same way. He's $900 cheaper than Scherzer on DK and $600 cheaper than Verlander. I think people might try to grab that savings, but... That's one of those things where you want to pay attention to ownership percentages. I'll have a good bit of sale, and uh, I don't really have much else to say about him. He's obviously a a high-end starter. Yeah, we don't really need to analyze this matchup too much. 
except to say that it, he's probably going to see um, nine righties, which, whatever. I mean, he still strikes him out at a 30% clip. He does get up a little more power to the right side, of course, because he's a lefty. There are guys, I think, that could give him a little bit of trouble. I think I would have Sale as the third by a hair okay. between the top three on DK. Um, so I think I'd rank them Verlander, Scherzer, then Sale. Uh, but the price sort of makes up for it because you're splitting hairs at the top. It's not it's not like I have Sale way lower than the other two guys. He's right up there. Uh, just a bit of personal preference with matchup. And I do have some respect for the Blue Jays' offense. But he's he's an awesome play. Like, I'm not saying don't play Chris Sale. Yeah. Uh, Blue Jays 27th in the league in weighted runs created plus versus lefties. Mm-hmm. So they but haven't they just got, been great. Right. They just got back Donaldson, though. Uh, that's going to help. That's a good point. Um, they just, oh, Morales, too. They just got back Morales as well. I think Morales is better against righties. I think he is, but he's still... He's still I mean, a hitter. <laughs> yeah, he's, exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm not looking at any of the hitting in this game. Uh, ben Intendi is fine as a one-off. Mookie Betts is always fine as a one-off. But uh, this game is just sale for me. Yeah, Sanchez, he's good at limiting hard, con- hard contact. And Betts is almost 6K on DraftKings. I guess they're just doing this now with some of the top guys like Trout and Mookie Betts. Um, so they're just pricing them up on these normal slates. And, I mean, I kind of like that. You'll get their ownership down a little bit, those extra few hundred dollars. Um, I like the Red Sox, but I'm not crazy about stacking against Aaron Sanchez in general. So... I'll probably be off of them for the most part, but I'd want Mookie Betts, J.D. Martinez, and Hanley. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're just expensive. Uh, their ownership will be relatively low because of their price mm-hmm. point. Um, yeah, and, and when they're going to be low-owned against a righty on a big slate like this, and I'm, I doubt they're going to get talked up too much. It's a good run total, but it's not something crazy. And they've been just smoking righties all year. Like, you want to get some exposure to them if you have multiple lineups to mess around with. Agreed. Marlins and Braves. Uh, Marlins, 4.1 run implied total. Braves, 4.4. 54% chance to win for the Braves. Uh, Dan Straley going for Miami. Brandon McCarthy going for Atlanta. Uh, I'm not looking at Brandon McCarthy. I'm not looking at either guy on FanDuel, but uh, Dan Straley grading out really well for me on DraftKings as a, you know, second starter punt type guy. Only 4,900. Um, he'll make basically anything you want to do on DraftKings work. I don't think you need to drop down all that far, but uh, he looks good for this sort of matchup. I got a lot of him in the first uh, crunch that I did. I knocked his innings back a little bit. You know, by like uh, two thirds of an inning, so it'll go down a little bit. But oddly enough, Dan Straley, a guy popping up for me. Tell me your Dan Straley thoughts. Yeah, so this is just a price and slate specific play. I want to get one of these top three arms in, and like, I mean, I do like Straley a little bit as a pitcher. I think there are times where you can use him. He had a fifteen point six percent his last start. And he's only had a couple strikeouts in each of his first two. So those are the first two starts of the season. I think he can get you 12 to 15 is what I wrote in the spotlight pitchers on DK. And, I mean, I would probably take 12 right now and be done with SP2. <laughs> get one of the top studs in and just call it good with all the, the rest of the bats because I think bats are going to be where GPPs are won, assuming that one of these top three guys doesn't score – 50 DK points or something like that. Um, like, I I mean, it's a tough matchup against the Braves. The run total isn't great against him. Um, so I'm sure that'll keep some people off of him. But, uh, no, you're good. But, uh, was that the music for me to stop talking about Dan Straley? <laughs> no, uh, not at all. No, I mean, off. it's just a price thing. Like, if he was 6K or 6,500, I'd probably be off of him or not as high on him yeah but he can miss, is just crazy yeah. low he can miss some bats and 
he'll throw, I'm, I'm guessing, 85 to 90 pitches if he's good, which is fine for me. Um, just give me five innings and don't get crushed. That's all I'm asking for for a $4,900 pitcher. Yeah, basically just be functional. Yes, that's it. That's all you need. Yeah, he fits really well with Scherzer, Verlander, Sale. Um, it'll let you do whatever you need to do from a hitting perspective. I don't have a huge problem with it. Um, you know, keep your expectations low, though. Yes, 12 to 15. If he gets you 15 at this price, you are thrilled. I've got him at 14 and a quarter right now. Oh, give me that every day, every day of the week. Exactly. Uh, I'm not looking at any hitting here. Um, yeah. I Freeman. Mean, Freeman, yeah. So there is a case to be made. I, I don't know how popular Straley's going to be. This will be something. This He's going to be another guy you want to check on the ownership projections for. He's volatile. Um, has home run problems at times. So if he's going to be... 30% for some reason on this slate, which I don't think he'll get anywhere near that. But if he's going to be the cheap guy that everyone's talking up, like we kind of are, then there's a case to be made to get in a Braves hedge stack because it could go bad for him in a hurry. The Braves are an offense I really respect. Um, but I'm more likely to play, play Straley, and he's probably going to be in my lineup at this point. There you go, people. Dan Straley tonight. Bet you didn't see that one coming. <sighs> yeah. Not so so excited about it, but <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Tigers and Mariners. Tigers, 4.1 run implied total. Mariners, 4.7. It's a 56% chance to win for the Mariners. Uh, Matt Boyd going for Detroit. Marco Gonzalez going for the Mariners. Uh, this isn't a pitching game for me. This is strictly hitting. In particular, I love the Mariners. Yeah, I'm guessing Cruz and Hanniger and uh, Segura. Yeah, everything. You can go the okay. whole way. Uh, Cruz, for sure, made spotlight hitters. Uh, Segura looks great for a shortstop play. Uh, Hanniger, you know, obviously has pop uh, against lefties. I don't have an issue having D. Gordon or Cano. Um, you know, Zanino, if you need a catcher on DK, will go really well with the stack. Uh, Chris's boy Ryan Healy who knows um, I, I'll have a ton of Mariners uh, 4.7 run implied total is you know in the top end of everything today so yeah I like the Mariners I don't really like Matt Boyd all that much he's not very good no I'm, I'm right there with you and the pricing on DK is really nice for all these guys despite yeah. a 5 run total or I'm seeing five right now. Are you seeing 4.7? I have 4.7. Okay, so you know, the total probably high. got knocked down a little bit. We should talk about the weather issues here, potential weather issues. Uh, this is going to be a game to keep an eye on. I'm yeah. seeing like a 60% chance of rain. I don't yeah, that's know. That's the only downside here. It, it, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> you, you don't think it's going to happen right now? Man, it doesn't look likely. Okay, well, would, I don't, like, tune into the live stream then. And yeah. You'll get the update from Weatherman Josh, Weatherman Chris. Um, it's just yeah. like, I don't know when they would start. That's kind of the problem. Okay. Yeah, and if they have a day game tomorrow, they could just do a doubleheader. Or I don't know how that works. If they, I guess yeah. if they have a night game, they could do a day-night doubleheader or something. But. Let me take a look at the schedule for tomorrow. So this is Tigers. They play tomorrow at 4.10. So they can go either direction if they needed to play two tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, and I never know how these double headers work with the schedule. There's always some logistical things they have to figure out. Um, so maybe they not they might not even play a double header tomorrow if this game gets canceled. But yeah. I don't Keep know. Keep an eye I mean, on it. But if yeah. it plays, I love the Mariners. Yeah, I like the Mariners a lot. Uh, Cruz and Hanniger for sure. And then you're getting a discount on some of these lefties. Um, yeah. On DK, so I don't mind going one through five or one through six or one through seven, even with Healy. So, I mean, I'm not crazy about D Gordon for 4,200, but you know, in the context of a stack, it's fine. Absolutely. And then uh, Tigers, I'll have some exposure to the Tigers as well. Uh, lots of righties going up against Marco Gonzalez, so they look a lot better on DK. Like 
Candelario is more expensive on FanDuel. Castellanos is a little bit cheaper, but still kind of priced up. So, you know, Jacoby Jones, Candelario, Castellanos, V-Mart, um, you know, James McCann, if you need a $3,000 catcher on DK, I think a Tiger stack is is pretty solid as well. There'll be someone that I have exposure to, uh, you know, probably like my sixth most owned stack or something like that. Mm-hmm. But they look good. If this yeah, game happens. It. Yeah, I'm hoping this one does because there is quite a bit of good hitting. And you mentioned all the guys that I'm looking at for the Tigers. My boy Jacoby Jones leading off. Is that what you have? Is I that did. right? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I missed that if you had been doing that the last couple of games. But uh, I like him leading off. He does strike out a ton, but whatever. He hits for a ton of power too. Nick Castellanos and John Hicks, catcher eligible on DK. Um, and then the guy right behind him, James McCann, catcher eligible for 3000 So, good uh, hitting all Jacoby around. Jacoby Jones has led off his past two games. Okay. Yeah, I just missed that then. So, yeah, uh, Tigers are a sneaky okay, a stack that most people probably won't be on. Yeah. But make sure that game happens. <laughs> uh, Indians and Royals. Indians, five run implied total. Royals, 3.2. 69% chance to win for the Indians. Nice. Thank you. Trevor Bauer going for Cleveland. Jason Hamill going for Kansas City. Um, I like Bauer quite a bit on FanDuel. He is not in the same sort of salary tier uh, as he is on DK. So the on FanDuel, the three biggies, Scherzer, Verlander, and Sale, all in the 11,000 range. Bauer only 9,500. I think he's going to be a relatively popular option to pay down to. Uh, on DK, um, he's more expensive, but still priced down from that big three. Uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about his ownership on DraftKings, but I like Trevor Bauer a lot, just sort of in general. Uh, I'd be happy to have him on either site, and I will have him uh, quite a bit on uh, on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I like Bauer as a pitcher. Uh, his Twitter game is a little bit, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm not into that. He's straight to Kimbe Matumbo on Twitter, blocking everyone. Yeah. Um, he his ownership on DK I think is going to be very low because he's in a very awkward price range kind of by himself. I agree. And you know, he's not the big name that Scherzer, Verlander, and Sale are, so. I don't think people really go to him at all. Uh, so there's a case to be made. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up being the highest scoring pitcher. The matchup isn't perfect against Kansas City. Um, I still do prefer Verlander and Scherzer and Sale over him with the extra salary. Uh, probably a pretty good contrarian option. I don't want to target against him with any Royals. Um and then there's weather concerns here, too. So that's going to be enough to knock Bauer off my list. I'm with you there. Um, I think Bauer lands in that range uh, that Alex sort of talked about in that pitcher's uh, likelihood to be the, you know, the highest or top two highest yes. scores on a slate. I think mm-hmm. that Bauer will probably have a higher opportunity to be one of the two highest scores on the slate than his ownership will reflect. I think he makes for a really nice GPP play because he'll likely be under owned. Absolutely. If, if you're if you're mass entering, I think having some exposure to Bauer is nice. Just sort of where his price lands and his ability to have a big game. Um, you know, when it's mo- when it's going well for him, he can really put it together. So that's the sort of like I, I would like him a lot more in a GPP than I ever would in cash. Yeah, when it's not going well, he's just. He's a total dick. He's <laughs> he really is. He's just got, wants every call and man, this guy. You know, as a pitcher, he's fine. As a as personality, a person. yeah. I'll pass. I don't have a ton of interest in this game from a hitting perspective. I'll have a, a tiny amount of exposure to the Indians. I'm actually surprised that it's not more, but I bar- like I barely got them in my first run through. Uh, even with that five-run implied total. So um, that's another game where I'm really curious to see what we're projecting their ownership for. 
I oh, don't have any, like, on the surface, if I was just looking at it, I would say that I liked the Indians quite a bit. But I don't know if it's just a price thing or what. They're just not a team that's popping up for me. I would, like, Kipnis is a guy that's showing up a lot. Only 2600 on FanDuel. Yeah, it's a really preposterous price point. But I would go to Yonder Alonso, Brantley, Kipnis, Lindor. Uh, you know, no problems with Ramirez or Encarnacion. Um, if someone said that they really like the Indians tonight, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put up too much of a fight. Yeah, I'm all over the Indians. Okay. Uh, so they're all very good hitters. They don't hit for a ton of power. There a lot of doubles and singles and stuff like that. But that's perfectly fine for stacks. You don't need home runs out of everyone to have a successful stack. Hamill has an over a 5 x fit this year. 40% hard contact against righties. 49% hard contact against lefties. Fifth highest average exit velocity against left-handed bats this year. Can't strike anybody out. Indians aren't really going to strike out in general. Um, so Brantley, uh, Ramirez, and Lindor are my favorite guys. Three of my favorite bats on the entire slate. And then down to Tyler Naquin. I think I would run this stack through. So Kipnis is cheap. He'll have some ownership. Indian stack will have some ownership for sure. But those prices for Lindor and Ramirez may keep some people off. Uh, but I want a full stack against Hamill. Not a lot of respect for him as a pitcher. The only problem is the weather. Um, we're hoping this one goes too. If those two games are knocked off the slate, the Detroit game and this game, that'll be kind of disappointing for me. Um, so just going to have to keep an eye on it, but I love the Indians. Yeah, the way that I'm seeing the weather for Kansas City and Cleveland, it's more likely to get a rain delay or you know, maybe postponed after five. Uh, it doesn't okay. give me too much pause to go to Bauer unless that shifts a bit earlier. Um, it actually kind of makes me like Bauer slightly more and the bats slightly less because there's a decent chance this game doesn't finish. Hmm. At least finish fully. Uh, but if they I go see. six, like I might still be okay with some Bauer. It's, some, yeah. another, it's one of the two games you need to keep an eye on for tonight. Right. You got anything else here? No, I'm good to move on. All righty. Astros and Rangers. Astros 4.9 run implied total. Rangers 3. Yeah. It's a 70% chance to win for the Astros. Should have rounded down. Uh, Justin Verlander going for Houston. Our boy Cole Hamels going for Texas. Oh. Um, <laughs> I love Verlander here. Uh, but I honestly... I. I'm not in a position to separate these guys. Scherzer, Verlander, Sale are all uh, equally good to me. I'll have relatively similar exposure to all three. Um, tune into the live stream if you want to see what that exposure actually is. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be on too much Cole Hamels tonight. I uh, probably won't get him at all, considering that uh, I don't think he's very good. Yeah. So Hamels, he's defying logic. For some of this, um, for some of the season, every what five six days, <laughs> right? Like forty nine percent hard contact against righties this year. Um, like this is the third time he's faced the Astros, and I was saying on the night shift that third time facing a pitcher in a month and a half, you'd think the hitters probably have an advantage, right? Like just seeing him, yeah, so many times, so many times through the order or whatever. Cole Hamill's highest um, hard hit or hard contact percentage in baseball this year. I'm not picking a hand. Just in general, he's number one. Dude, I, I'm telling you, man. Like, I don't know if Fangraphs is just broken. Like, and he he's not actually giving up all these hard hits. Um, he should be getting rocked or having a few starts where he gives up a bunch of home runs and stuff. But he's just not really doing that. Um, he's survived against the Astros a couple times. I. I don't know. I have to do what the numbers tell me. So I'll be stacking Astros, and you're kind of getting a discount. These guys are all under 5K on DraftKings. Guriel is 3,700. Bregman, 3,700. Gaddis, 3,300. All guys that I like. Um, so whatever. I'm stacking against Cole Hamels. So am I. Uh, if he does it again, then I'll probably stack against him the next time if his numbers look this bad. Yeah, I'm sure when, I don't know when what they play the Astros again in two weeks, uh, we'll do it again. Yep. Yeah, I love the Astros. George Springer, spotlight hitter tonight, but could have easily used Altuve, Correa, Gurriel, Bregman, 
Um, you know, if you want Gaddis as a catcher on DK, knock yourself out. Uh, love the Astros. Uh, they'll be a relatively popular stack for me. Probably one of my top three, um, if we're not talking about cores. So, yeah. Yeah. It's hard to not love the Astros running righty, 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 righty against a lefty. But hasn't gone as well as I would have liked it to go uh, so far this year when we've done this exact same conversation. Could have just yeah. spliced in the old ones and been fine. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, and I don't have any interest in uh, any Rangers bats. No, I'm so I'm all over Verlander here. Actually, he's just been nasty, striking out lefties at like a forty percent rate, which is nuts. Um, he just like look at these numbers; they're insane. His swinging strike rate is fourteen point four. His whiffs are, I believe, top fifteen. Yeah, he's fourteenth uh, in whiffs per swing this year. He's going up against the Rangers, who I believe they have the third highest K percentage against righties this year. He's got 70 Ks in 53 and two-thirds innings. Dude, he, yeah. Like, I don't know. Whatever Trevor Bauer said, it, Trevor Bauer looks like a genius. Like, he's, like, he knows something. Did you see that on Twitter? No. That Bauer was basically saying that the Astros were cheating or doing something, um, that was towing the line between legal and illegal with all their pitchers because something about their spin rate increasing when these guys are going to Houston, like Verlander and uh, Garrett Cole and McCullers. Uh, so, and then Verlander went out and threw an absolute gem, struck out like 15 that same day. He's not, <clears throat> it's not a, it, he's not cheating. He gets to bang Kate Upton. Uh, that'll right. make anybody find the fountain of youth. Right, he's just going out there and pitching. Like he's, yeah. he's got nothing to worry about at home. No. Um, well, imagine if he you knew know, that's you're what you're going to do afterwards. You wouldn't have a care <laughs> in the world. I don't know. I mean, maybe their marriage is unhealthy, and he does have stuff to worry about. So who knows? But you know, he's he's got the looks part down. When he goes home, he's yeah. pitching like the best of his career since he's gone over to Houston. I found a youth which, man. Yeah. Um, I don't know. These Rangers, I'm not scared about. Beltre back in the lineup does hurt a little bit. But, man, who are you worried about getting to Verlander here? If he's on his stuff, I could see another 13 strikeout game. Yeah, I mean, you know, Joey Gallo is going to be in some trouble here. He's, he's lucky he hits lefty because uh, the way Verlander has been mowing people down, um, he might make Gallo look pretty silly. The Shields too. Yeah, the Shields. Beating off. A lot. Good God, that is awful. Chirinos case a lot too. Yep. So yep. does or- Odor if he's back in the lineup. My God. Yeah, go uh, go Verlander tonight. Go Astro stack tonight. Yes. All right, time to get cores out of the way. Rockies and Brewers. Rockies, 5.6 run implied total. Brewers, 4.9. There wasn't a total out yet. I picked 10.5. It felt like uh, a logical spot to land. Let's see if that's out yet. I'm sure that it's not. But it doesn't hurt. Only takes a couple seconds. Uh, Yeah, no total yet, so we'll go with 10.5. I don't imagine it's going to be too much lower considering... Uh, 57% chance to win for the Rockies. Chad Bettis going for Colorado. Brandon Woodruff going for Milwaukee. We're not exactly running out of Murderer's Row pitchers here. So it's all hitters. It's cores. I'm going to have Rockies. I'm going to have Brewers. You can pretty much use whoever you want on either side. Pricing's your f- pricing is your friend as well. Uh, is there anything you don't like here? No, that's the thing. Like This game should be pretty quick. It is Coors Field. It's a big slate, so I'm more likely to use a full core stack on a bigger slate just because ownership spread out. Um, bullpen game for the Brewers, so I don't know which arm is going to come in for them after Woodruff because I don't think Woodruff's going to go very long at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I would have to give priority to the Rockies, lefties, Blackman, Gonzalez, Para. Gonzalez and Parra are both under 4K on DraftKings. Like you shouldn't be able to fit an entire Coors stack with these top guys, uh, these top pitchers. But you can you can you can do it if you get to like Straley or even like Sunny Gray. Uh, so 
I think DK is blowing the pricing once again. All the brewers are forty seven hundred dollars or cheaper. It's going to be probably the highest owned stacks, one and two highest owned stacks in the night. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, who's going to get over like twenty five percent? I don't think anybody. No. So I'll have uh, I'll have a bundle of both sides of this. Um, Yelich made uh, spotlight hitters four thousand on FanDuel, forty seven hundred on DK. Chad Bettis doesn't miss bats. Yelich, lefty, cores. You know, you guys know the the recipe at this point. Uh, there's not much else to say. Um, everybody's going to give the same advice on Rockies Brewers. It's because that's how the math shakes out. You should expect yeah. runs. You should ex- expect scoring. Um, We're going to see. Yeah. Going to be the biggest ownership. Score. Use ownership projections to to guide you when it comes to cores games. Mm-hmm. Diamondbacks and Nats. Uh, Diamondbacks, 3.2 run implied total. Nats, 4.4. God damn it, we did this again. 64% chance to win for the Nats. Matt, Coke, Cuck, Cock. I have no memory whatsoever of looking that up, even though that I know that I did it. Anyway, you're not playing him. You're not playing the Diamondbacks. I really like Max Scherzer tonight, which is the only thing that really matters here. And I also love a Nat stack. So everything Washington looks good for me. Everything Diamondbacks, including the pronunciation of their starting pitcher's name, is irrelevant. Yeah, Matt Cook. Thanks, uh, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my memory is shit. Uh, too much weed, man. No, that's all right. That's all right. The young gun will come and I'll, I'll pick you up when you're down. So You even got uh, – uh, I had it up here before. Let me go back to it since this is relevant now. Uh it's Faria and not Faria, so good for you for like getting that absolutely right again. Do you just read yeah. these pronunciation guides? <laughs> no, I don't know. Sometimes I go with Faria, sometimes I go with Faria. Who knows? It's Faria uh, per baseball reference. So It's Faria? Oh, yeah. all right. Sweet. You said it, and I was like, shit, am I saying this one wrong, too? And I pulled it up. <laughs> sure enough, Faria. I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to get this wrong know. forever. It just comes to me. It just comes to me. Uh, apparently, uh, you can read. <laughs> as opposed to me where I'm relatively illiterate apparently anyway talk about the Nats yeah like so Scherzer is 13-3 most expensive pitcher on DK he's worth it if you have Scherzer over Verlander I can't really argue that um, you could probably convince me that Scherzer is a better play the Diamondbacks do strike out a bunch against righties um you're getting Goldschmidt and Pollock without the platoon advantage, which is nice. It's Scherzer. He, you wouldn't be shocked if he goes out there and strikes out 16 Diamondbacks. Like, yeah. I'm not playing any Diamondbacks. If Scherzer's your number one, then fire him up because he's an awesome play here. Matt Cook on the other side. I mean, not going to him. I do love Harper. Matt Adams is 5K on DraftKings. So expensive. Like, I can't even really argue with the price, though. He's oh, no, I mean, just it makes raking. sense. Yeah, like the last month, just going nuts. Um, hitting behind Rendon and Harper and Turner is probably going to help, but whatever. He's still hitting the ball really well. Slugging uh, 700. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty nuts. Um, and he's going to continue to be, I think, especially against righties, because Harper, Turner, Rendon, as long as those guys are healthy. Yeah. Um, I love Rendon for 4,100. And then I, if you can get to the stack, by all means, get to the stack, because I don't think Cook is any good. Nope. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all Nats here. It's no Diamondbacks, just like you said. Yeah, I love the Nats. I'll have them uh, a lot. Michael Taylor, only 2300 on FanDuel. Uh, while he is hitting 7th, that makes for a really nice bargain price. Helps fit in some of this stuff a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, I love Adams. I love Trey Turner big time today. Uh, you know, Bryce Harper, obviously always in play. Uh, and that stack is going to be a pretty regular thing in my lines. And so is having Max Scherzer, so... It's all it's all Nats and it's absolutely no Diamondbacks. Yep. Angels and Twins. Angels 4.7 run implied total. Twins 3.6. 
62% chance to win for the Angels. Tyler Skaggs uh, going for the Angels. Lance Lynn going for Minnesota. Uh, I guess I like Skaggs. I just can't imagine he's going to have any ownership. Uh, just sort of where he lands from a salary perspective. He's kind of in a weird middle ground. Uh, on a smaller slate, if this was like a seven gamer and this game existed, I think Skaggs would be a guy that I'd be focused on uh, a little bit. But for now, he just kind of slips off into the ether. Uh, this game's basically not existent to me. Yeah, uh, I wish I liked a little bit more in this game. I like Otani for 4,500 against Lance Lynn, who struggles with lefties. Um, you know, you can go to Trout pretty much any slate. He's 5,800 against a righty in Lance Lynn who can strike out righties. So I'm probably just avoiding both sides of this. I would have some interest in Skaggs if he was cheaper. It's a pretty good matchup against the Twins. They strike out the seventh highest or seventh most K percentage against lefty uh, pitchers this year. Fifth lowest hard hit percentage against them. Um, like, I think he can make some of these Twins miss, but... 8600 he's just in a really awkward pricing tier. Yeah. So I probably won't end up on him. And then I don't really want Twins bats. So yeah, this I game I don't have sucks. any bats. Yeah. Just the, I don't that's it. But sometimes uh, it's not that interesting people. <laughs> yeah. Like uh this next one, I don't have much of anything. Um Dodgers and Reds. Dodgers 4.7 run implied total. Reds, 3.2. I was looking at the wrong game, by the way. I was thinking about Padres and Cardinals. Anyway, 67% chance to win for the Dodgers. Kenta Maeda going for L.A. Matt Harvey going for Cincinnati. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be looking at Harvey all that much here, but I, Maeda's kind of in the same boat as Skaggs. He's in this weird middle ground pricing where I'm not going to get to him. If it was a shorter slate, I would probably get to him quite a bit. Uh, what I'm looking at here is a Dodger stack, particularly on FanDuel. Jock Peterson, 2,400. Yasmani Grandal, 3,100. Cody Bellinger, 3,400. Um, just really, really low-priced Dodgers on FanDuel. I don't expect too much ownership in this game either, so the Dodgers are a place that I'll probably end up higher on than the field. Uh, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, um, I mean, Matt Harvey, I don't think... Just because he got traded, he's fixed any of his issues. No. Uh, like, you can stack up all these Dodgers against him. He's getting smoked by both sides. So, 45% hard contact against lefties, 40 against righties. Um, I mean, the top five. So, I'd probably be done. Well, I don't really want Utley, but I like Puig for 3,400 on DK. I think you can get to the stack on DK. Um, the price oh, is yeah, probably a little sure. bit better on FanDuel. But last game of the night, uh, late night hammer. I love the idea of getting some Dodgers in. Grandal, one of my favorite catchers for 3,700. Bellinger, one of my favorite first basemen for 4,300. Um, they're going to be putting the ball in play against Harvey. And if we think he's broken, which I think he's broken. Broken Matt then, Harvey. Yeah, dude. He. No? Wrestling fan? Nothing? No. Okay. I. I don't understand the reference. Um, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, the people that do watch wrestling will get what I just did. They'll probably appreciate it more than me. Yeah, probably. Uh, so Maeda, 9,100. Yeah, you said it. He's kind of in that awkward pricing tier, but I do prefer him over Skaggs. This would be the mid-tier guy that I like. Okay. Um, Reds are 28th in ISO, 25th in WRC plus against righties. He's got a really good swinging strike rate, really good whiff per swing rate. Uh, I think he can get a bunch of strikeouts here. It's just going to be a matter of um, it's going to be tough to end up on him. Yeah, I'm just with you. I'd like to have him in one or two <clears throat> lines um, just because I think that he has a really nice matchup. 3.2 run implied total is kind of crazy. See, did I get him at all? I don't think that I did, at least not in my first draft. But he's, he's someone that I'll force into a couple lines be just because. Okay, so I got him in 4% of my lines, which is perfect right now. Uh, on DK, I didn't really get any of him just because of where he's at. Uh, it's easier to go all the way down or just stay all the way up. I feel like Fat Joe when I say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like the Dodgers bats. Let's hit that final game because it's not that interesting. Padres and Cardinals. 
Uh, Padres, 3.6 run implied total. Cardinals, 4.2. It's a 57% chance to win for the Cardinals. Uh, Eric Lauer going for San Diego. Luke Weaver going for St. Louis. Uh, Luke Weaver looks awesome on FanDuel. Big time chance to pick up a win. Only 5,900. He's like the 22nd most expensive pitcher, which is ludicrous for someone with a 3.6 run implied total and the sort of stuff that Weaver has. Not that he's like some crazy stuff guy, but just regardless. Uh, Weaver's price significantly higher on DraftKings. He's someone that I would use as a, a second starter on DK, but on FanDuel, he's the best pay down option for me. I just think that I might have to pay down like too far. <laughs> and I won't, I don't think he'll have very much ownership on FanDuel. So I'll definitely be heavier than the field on Luke Weaver. Yeah, dude. Like, I mean, you, you kind of have to consider him here. I don't like him as a pitcher. I, I think he's overrated by the public. Like, his strikeout numbers are fine against righties. Uh, swinging strike rate isn't very impressive. He does not get a lot of whiffs. Um, if he's going to be chalk here, I'll, like it's a pretty easy fade just because I don't think he's got huge K upside even against the Padres. Yeah. Um, but on FanDuel, like he could get you five innings, six innings, a few strikeouts, and a win, and you're thrilled with that on FanDuel. On DK, it's a little bit different. You kind of need him to, to rack up those strikeouts at almost 8K. So I'm kind of off Weaver, even though I think you should consider him if you're MMEing. Um, I mean, do you like bats in this game? Do you like bats against Lauer? I'll have a very small amount of Cardinals. I just don't like the game. Cardinals implied total is only 4.2. There's just so many better places to go. Uh, you know, Matt Carpenter is fine. I would do, like, a, the top four mm -hmm. or even top five if you wanted to include Fowler, although he's kind of expensive on DK now. So I'll have a very little amount of Cardinals stack. I don't expect many people to be on them either. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the Cardinal stack just in general. These guys do have big power. They can get it out at Petco uh, against this lefty, Eric Lauer. Um, oh, my God. They're going to be super, super low on What? I didn't realize. Uh, Matt Carpenter's under 3000 on, on FanDuel. I didn't see his price on DK. Uh, just a really weird low price. It is a lefty-lefty, but under 3000 as part of the stack, I like it. It just caught me off guard. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. Um I, yeah, I do have a little bit of interest in the Cardinals stack. I like Fam, Martinez, Ozuna. Even Jed Giorco has been crushing lefties. So if it was a shorter slate or a better park, I think I would be more interested. But I, I just don't know if I'll be able to get to these Cardinals bats. I hear you. It's not, it's not a very uh, exciting hitting stack game. So when I ran the crunches earlier, got a lot of Eric Lauer as one of the two starters on DraftKings. So a lot of Lauer, Tyon, Straley, Sale, Verlander, Gray, Weaver, Scherzer, Bauer. It's basically just combinations of all of those guys. So give me two guys to take a look at to start. Let's try... Can you get in two of the, the big guys? Can you try, like, Verlander, Sale? Uh, I, I will do, do Verlander, Sale, and we'll see what we get to. Because, I, I mean, I always like to see if, if any stack fits. Because then you can kind of figure out the chalk. Or at least you'll you'll know a stack that the MME guys are going to be on. Okay, so Verlander and Sale. Mm. Uh, let's see what we're getting here. Tigers, Diamondbacks, Mets, Marlins, Pirates, Tigers. Orioles, Orioles Mariners looks kind of nice. I mean, if yeah, but you're not the, getting the... the ass end of these stacks, so right. it doesn't look like that's feasible with anything that you'd be happy about. Right. So you want to look probably more at what Verlander Straley or Verlander and somebody higher than Straley. Try try Verlander Straley. I'm guessing you can do a lot. I'm guessing you can. I do haven't started making laps yet. But... All right, so we got Verlander there. I got to remove that from sale. All right, so Verlander and Straley can get you to probably whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Brewers, Mariners with the Mariners, like good guys. Tigers, Rockies. So you can get, oh, Nats, Orioles. That one's not so shabby. 
All right, Dan Straley, my boy. Um, one, two, four, five on the Orioles. One, two, three on the Nats plus Severino. So I don't, you know, if you're grabbing a catcher in a stack, I don't ever really care who it is. Yeah. You can get the full. You can get a full core stack of Rockies Brewers if you want. <laughs> That's so stupid that the pricing should never be like that. No. You should not be able to fit in full cores. So, basically, as long as you don't go to two of the studs, you'll be fine on DK with mm-hmm. any sort of direction you want to go. Um, on FanDuel, I would probably want to look at Bauer as my first guy. Uh, if I were looking to do like a, a single entry, um, I think Bauer would be my spot, barring any weirdness to his over- ownership numbers. So I could do something like Bauer, uh, you know, Brewers and Indians or Nats and Indians. Um, ooh, Dodgers and Brewers, I think, would be a, a nice little stack. Gives me a little bit of the hammer. For sure. Yeah, I like Bauer tonight just to make things work a little bit nicer on FanDuel. We'll see what that ownership looks like. Uh, Nashville lost last night, correct? Yeah, man. that's They lost big, too. Like, they got dominated. Um, they lost three games at home that series. Which wow, is, really? Yeah, and that's a tough place to play. And Winnipeg just went in and dominated game seven pretty much from start to finish. Yeah. So it was, it was weird to see. I thought Nashville would come through and win, but they got they got crushed. Uh, there's one game tonight for hockey. It's Capitals Lightning. Uh, I will do a showdown article. There you go. Um, you know, I wouldn't be playing heavy volume in showdown. I'm not playing heavy volume, but it's just kind of fun to to root for specific players. And um, in addition to the outcome of the game, man, NHL hockey. Playoff hockey. It is uh, some good stuff. Yeah. No basketball until Sunday, so I don't have to talk about anything there. So it's just uh, normal plugs. Check out the website. Subscribe to Twitter and Facebook. I don't not Facebook. Subscribe to Twitter <laughs> and YouTube. Um, I don't have much else. Uh, Alex has put out a lot of individual content. He did a game plan article for baseball. Uh, he's had a couple uh, premium only articles about ownership rates and chances of being, you know, one of the top players of the night or top stacks of the night. So uh, if you're curious what's happening on the premium side of it, uh, you're getting content that does not exist elsewhere, in my opinion. Uh, very high end stuff. So go check that stuff out. Um, we won't be back until Monday morning. I'll be back tonight for the live stream with Chris, but. Uh, this is another week in the books for us. I'll be doing the night shift uh, for Saturday slates from now on as well. There uh, you go. So if you're looking for a little bit of a rundown on both Saturday slates, I will be doing that, and it'll be out tonight. Perfect. There you go, people. Best of luck tonight. Uh, have a good weekend, and we will talk to you again Monday morning.